Welcome to AP Statistics with Mr. Walton. Today we're going to talk about Chapter 3. We're going to review. As you see before you were in Section 3.1, we're going to talk about scatter plots. This is straight from your book. Ladies and gentlemen, please make sure you read the summaries at the end of each section. What I'm going to do at this point in time is highlight some of the important concepts like making a scatter plot. Oh, but we're good with that. Can we talk about strength, direction, form in this chapter? Are we interested in curved relationships? No. We're only talking about linear relationships, so make sure that you keep this in mind. When we're talking about correlation, this is key. The correlation coefficient is <clears throat> R. Don't forget, again, the correlation coefficient is R. So, when we look at that, remember, here are our keys. The remember. Correlation does not worry about which variable is explanatory or which is response. It doesn't matter about changing the unit of measurement or it doesn't matter when we talk about this, when we talk about transforming. R stays the same. Lastly, correlation can be affected by outliers, so be aware of this. And now, let's move on to 3.2. Again, that's 3.2. Okay, so when we talk about a regression line, let's keep in mind we have our slope, we have our y intercept. What we want to make sure that we avoid whenever possible is extrapolation. The model that we use is called the least squares regression line, which we always talk about as the LSRL. Keep that in mind. Please don't forget on your green formula sheet that you have this equation that allows you with the mean point to calculate our LSRL. Okay, so don't forget that. Also, when we examine how well the LSRL, LSRL is or does describe our data, the number one way for us to determine if it's good or not is our residual plot. Always use the residual plot and use the correlation coefficient r or the coefficient of determination r squared to back up what your residual plot says. If your residual plot is random, awesome. If your r value is 0.5, not awesome. We want both to be involved. Also, realize that you might have an affectation based upon influential observations or outliers. Be careful. We don't drop them. We talk about them. If you detect them, you talk about them. Lastly, though, don't even forget from 3.2. Let's remember that causation is not formed from correlation. So if we erase that, we have to remember that correlation does not, that's supposed to say does, imply causation. All right. Lastly, 
at the end, if we look at data analysis, here's where we want to be able to understand. Can we create a scatter plot? Are we able to interpret the direction, form, and strength and comment on outliers or influential points? Make sure you're able to gather a numerical summary. That's one of our stats for x's and y's, as well as r and r squared. Okay. By doing that, that's using our regression line, lin reg a plus bx. Don't forget we're always talking about our y hat. Also, don't forget that we're talking about residuals, which are y minus y hat. That's actual minus predicted and the standard deviation of the residuals. Very important. Last thing is, don't forget the sentence. If you forget the sentence, we're in big trouble. That's where we say about And you see me writing. So again, about blank percentage, got to fill this in, of the variability in y, make sure it's in context, can be explained by the regression of y in context on x in context. The sentence, don't forget it. You will see it again. Therefore, last part of this is we want to look at a practice FRQ. The Great Plains Railroad is interested in studying how fuel consumption is related to the number of rail cars for its trains. Okay, If this is the case, we're looking at a random sample. They gave us a scatter plot. They gave us a residual plot. We have all this data. Okay, Based on the scatter plot, it appears to be fairly linear. Based on the residual plot, that appears to be random. So far I'm, I'm thinking this is a pretty good deal. Then they gave us all of this information. They gave us all the pertinent pieces. What do I not want? I don't want this. 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 Okay. What do I need to remember? This is my y-intercept. This is my rate of change, in this case, the slope. Remember, it's next to a variable rail car. Constant is our y-intercept. We also have the standard deviation of the residuals, and we have our r-square value. So we have enough information. We don't really need the standard deviations that are listed here but we could use them depending on what they're asking us. So let's look. What are we being asked? What is the equation of the LSRL? Be sure to define any variables used. Okay then. By the way, this is that straightforward. They gave it to us. They gave us the answer right here. Be careful though that you define or write correctly. So I'm going to say x is equal to the number of rail cars and that y is equal to fuel consumption. 
And then I can say y hat. That's important. It's always the estimated fuel consumption is equal to 10.677 plus 2.1495x. All right. Next up for part B. Suppose that fuel consumption costs $25 per unit. Give an estimate for the predicted change in average cost of fuel per mile for each additional rail car that is attached. Now this is the thing, each additional rail car is just one at a time. So right now, okay, when we look at this, we know we're going to pay $25 for one rail car. Okay, when we look at our slope, when we look at our slope and it is defined then we look at, okay, this is the units per mile versus the number of rail cars. So I have 2.1495 times 25, and that is going to give me the expected $53.74 for the average cost for an additional car. Now, Coefficient of determination. Remember I told you, the sentence. Remember this is R squared. Our R squared value is equal to 96.7%. So we'd say about 96.7% of the variability in fuel consumption, that's our Y, can be explained by the regression of fuel consumption on the number of rail cars. Lastly, almost, almost there. Would it be reasonable to use the regression equation to predict the fuel consumption for a train on this route if the train had 65 cars? All right, here's the thing. No, this would be extrapolation. 65 is far outside of our data. So we're not going to do it. Okay? Don't forget, extrapolation is bad. And lastly, what does S tell you? Remember, S, 4.361, is the standard deviation of the residuals. And how do we talk about it? We say, on average, the fuel consumption has a <coughs> difference of 4.361 units between the predicted amount and the actual amount. Hope this helps. And study, study, study. AP Stats rocks.